Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're doing that much in about. They look quite busy out there. Impression's out of face south. London Heathrow, Europe's biggest and busiest airport. Transporting more than 74 million passengers every year. Just your passport, please. Have you got your boarding cards in your hand, ladies? This is so big. This is so complex. It's Gatwick on steroids. With the flights taking off or landing every 45 seconds, Heathrow is operating at full capacity, and there's no room for error. You know, if Heathrow sneezes, the rest of Europe and the world catches a cold. We could have blown some of it, is that what you're saying? Even the smallest problem can cause chaos. 915 and 919 have been cancelled. Nothing is landing, nothing's taking off. And cost the multi-billion pound business of fortune in fines and lost revenue. We lost about £3,000 just because of you, sir. This series goes behind the scenes. This is the bit no one sees. To follow the hidden army of staff working against the clock to get thousands of planes away on time. Every second counts. The size of a small city, Heathrow has its own police force. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you to come with me, please? Paramedics. <laughs> and vets. Wow, look at you. From the baggage handlers and security officers. Look at that. Oh, you can't take that on the aeroplane. No, no. To the air traffic controllers and pilots. I'm not going to say I'm living the dream, but I. Everyone has a vital role to play. All good things. In keeping Britain's most famous airport flying. It's in the hands of God, really. Heathrow's success depends on getting planes into the air on time. It's Saturday afternoon, the peak time for departures. And outside Terminal 3, ground staff are under pressure to keep everything running to schedule. Are you departing crew or arrival? Arrival? Oh, no, I said just so. Dispatcher James is responsible for getting the Pakistan Air flight to Lahore away at exactly 15.55. Uh, flight came in late, um, 10 past. We came here, the fuel is here, which is good. It can take an hour sometimes, the fuel. Um, caterers and cleaners are here. If James misses this departure slot, the airline could be heavily penalised. Flight's not ready on time. You know, it's going to cost money or it's going to cost the airline money, so, uh, yeah, we can't afford to wait for anything. It can get very busy. Once the passengers start coming, they'll open the gate in about five minutes. And then it all seems to happen at once, so you just... By the car before the storm, really, you know. For Pakistan Air, it's the busiest flight of the week. At the gate, the check-in team has just 30 minutes to get all 350 people on board. Do you have 19 kilos here, yeah? No, oh, there's two more. See, that's my mum's bag I'm carrying. Where is your mum? She hasn't got a bag with her, so... Check-in agent Maria is on the lookout for passengers attempting to slip on extra hand luggage. This way, please. The sizes of the bag, some bags weigh 15, 20 kilos. And to get this health and safety, because if it falls on your head, you know, it can knock someone out, kill someone. So. We've got a very busy flight. Yeah. The overhead cabin cannot take the excess weight. OK, what's the situation here? You have to pay because you have an extra bag. OK. Have you not dumped a bag? You want to dump? It's fine. Has it been over there? You OK, can... there. Dump that bag. Sir, thank you. Time is running out, and there are still 250 bags to check. Can you scale, please? No, not, not yourself, love. <laughs> you don't have to wear yourself. <laughs> I'm the guy, the color, the color. No, no, darling, your bag. All right, love. Enjoy your flight. She's only about 70 kilos over. I will give you a discount. Huh? Yeah, I'll give you a discount. Oh. Pay for three kilos, 30 pounds. That's good. All right, 20 pounds. Huh? 20 pounds. OK, just keep that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> I, I, if it's, like, too much money, they want to bring it down to a point that they can pay. Do you do that? Are you up for negotiations? I negotiate. Depends on my mood, really. <laughs> what sort of mood are you in today? I'm in a happy mood today. It's not just that the gates where heavy bags can cause delays. It's all business. Careful, you're going to get crew bags as well. Uh, In Terminal 3's baggage depot, Andy is racing to fill 12 containers. He's got half his bathroom in this one. 
Why is it hard work? There's a bag heavier than the other flights. Ridiculously heavier. With a luggage allowance of 50 kilograms per passenger, Pakistan Air's bags are among the heaviest in Heathrow. You don't think, like, when you're carrying your bag along, you don't think how heavy it's going to be for someone that's just thrown 300 bags in all different bins. Despite the weight of the bags, Andy's got to keep up the pace. The ground crew are waiting to load the plane. Jesus. I'm knackered now. I'm boiling. See, this is why I wear shorts. I'm boiling now. I'll be T-shirt, everything coming off in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, please have your boarding cars ready for inspection as leaving the lounge and again before boarding the aircraft. Once again, we are for Pakistan International Airline. We'd like to wish you a very pleasant flight. Thank you. Um, what are the passengers now? We're missing uh, three. Yeah, which ones we're missing, please? Uh, A final count reveals three checked in passengers have still not turned up at the gate. I'm uh, just missing passengers now. I'm still loading the aircraft, but there's no problem. We'll be done in about five or ten minutes, but we'll just try to get everybody here, really. Surely three passengers missing, three passengers. The whole team is dispatched to scour the departure lounge for them. How long ago did they come through? Quite a while ago, so they should be somewhere in the departure lounge. I check where the, uh, the seating area, and then I go back to duty free again. PIA? PIA, yeah? Straight down, please. Gate 27, we're about to close. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to be, I don't know you're late, madam. Yeah, here, here, here. This way, this way, this way. Watch it, watch it, watch your foot. With the flight now 10 minutes late, and one passenger still missing, the airline must make a decision. I really don't know where to look now. Do you need more time? How long do you need? There are already about 300 passengers on board, so we don't want to wait. We have uh, lots of pressure at the end, from Heathrow, from our in the management, from head office, and we have to send the flight. The order to leave without the passenger has been given, but the flights can't depart with their luggage on board. We've gone past schedule now, so this is costing the, you know, it's the delay of the flight now. So, yeah, time of the essence, really. Yeah, 43, 41 right, 43 right, yeah. Any passengers fail to show to the flight, bags have to come off the aircraft. Um, so, yeah, it's just basically get them off, get the bags off and close the flight. James's team must search through 12 full containers, and with every minute that passes, fines are mounting. Last year, missing passengers cost airlines £3.5 million in late fees. 2-0, please. 2-0. We're still looking for bags, even. Let's close the door so in case he turns up, we're not, we can't accept anymore, yeah? Finally, the bag is found, and the flight can go. Half an hour late. All right, can close, Tessie? Yep. That's it? Yep. It's all done. The flight is gone? Yes, sir. What time the flight is? 5 o'clock, isn't it? This flight was 3.55, sir. Not 5 o'clock. It says 14.55, you should go for boarding, which is, like, nearly two hours ago, sir. So, and we've been looking for you everywhere. Where you yeah, been here? There is looking for there. You are looking on the... sitting somewhere? Yeah, sitting and uh, looking for the... nobody announcement is there as well. Nothing is. Sir, all 200, uh, nearly 300 passengers made it on time, so I'm sorry. Oh. But anyway, because of so, you, the flight gone uh, like more than half an hour late. It's gone? Just yes. because of you, sir. Oh. No, we uh, lost about 3,000, nearly three, 4,000 pounds oh. uh, because of the delay, sir, you caused. Uh, the flight is gone already? Yes, sir. Flight was got your bags up, sir. You have to go and change your ticket and everything. They will tell you how much it's going to cost you or whatever, yeah? Okay, bye bye. See you later. Bye -bye. All right, James. All right, guys. Thank you. There's no rest for the Pakistan air team. In 60 minutes' time, the next flight is due to depart. Every 45 seconds, a plane lands or departs from Heathrow, and the air traffic controllers are responsible for every single one. We were now in November. It looks quite busy out there, I reckon about uh, 15 minutes. Iberia 31 Sierra Whiskey, monitor the tower, 118 decimal 5. 
Every day, they must precisely coordinate more than 1,400 plane movements. In a busy hour, we can depart one aircraft every minute. We call it a wheels-up departure, which basically means you've got one on the runway, which is departing. The moment the nose wheel is off the ground for that aircraft, we're clearing the one behind for takeoff straight away. Using only two runways, I don't think there's anywhere else that pushes as much traffic as we do. Gavin is starting his shift. Over the next eight hours, he'll depart over 400 planes. Yeah, OK, mate, perfect, thank you. Sometimes, you know, I might look at it as a little train set for me. So when I was a kid, you know, I used to have my train set and I'd be sort of moving my trains about and you go there, you're going there, you're going... And that's exactly what I'm doing up here. You know, you could have seven, eight, nine, ten different things going on. And multitask, believe it or not, men can multitask. The air traffic controller selection process is one of the toughest job interviews in the world. Less than 1% of applicants pass. It suits some people, it doesn't suit others. An Oxford graduate might not be suited to air traffic control, but myself coming out of school with five GCSEs is. Air France 863 Whiskey, good afternoon, push and starts approved. Because we're working 98% capacity, we've got very little give, very, very little give. So yeah, we only need to have you know, a, a small little problem at Heathrow with a knock-on effect, not just through Heathrow, but throughout Europe. Could be massive, and even throughout the rest of the world. With no room for delays, Heathrow employs 350 engineers round the clock to fix any faults immediately. Oh, my God, yesterday was so busy. <laughs> it's a good hour. It's Thursday morning, and in Terminal 2, engineers Jack and Andy have received a priority call from security. I think it's late. It's either lane 18, 18 or 16. We'll find out we get her. The belt on the fast-track lane has broken, and the queue is at a standstill. Let's have a look. We just got to turn it off completely. We want to get this done like, as soon as possible because depending on how busy it is, you know, the queue can go from like tens to like hundreds in like, you know, like minutes. In Heathrow, anything that slows people down could mean missed flights. It's on the angle there, isn't it? Yeah, this is pissed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, it's the roller. Yeah. The roller's pissed, or is yeah. it? The lane has been shut for 10 minutes, and the backlog of passengers is intensifying. Oh, don't do this to me, come on. I'll lift it up, pull, get all that crap out from underneath, in between the roller and that. Up there? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Running, yeah? Yeah, they're fine. All right. Good. Now that the belt is moving again, the cause of the hold-up becomes clear. And what did you find in there? That right there. Yeah, there you go. That was the bit what released as, as we lifted it up. It's dust. It's got a bit of hair in it. <laughs> Jack can keep it on his <laughs> yeah, tool I'll bag. Keep that, yeah. <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Heathrow is one of Britain's busiest borders. To police it, the airport retains a force of 400 officers. What was the time of arrest, please? It's 11.43, Sarge. Yeah. And the offence? Attempted GBH, Section 18. Is it another GBH? Is it GBH? It's a serious assault. Two hours into their shift, PCs Claire and Steve have received an alert that a suspected violent criminal is flying out of the airport. Are we going to... Speak to a male that's on, on a flight this morning that's um, been circulated on PNC for a serious assault. Okay, so we need to go and have a word with him, um, okay. identify, see if it's the same yeah. person. If you say have a word with him, you need to nick him. That's yes. <laughs> and if he is the same person that's wanted, then he will be arrested. They're getting to the gate early to be in position when their target arrives. Hello, gents. Hello. Can I ask you if someone has checked in, please? Oh, uh, yeah, by all means, Shane. Yeah. He hasn't checked in yet. OK, what time uh, does check-in close? 11.20, sorry. 11.20. When he does check in, he presents himself here. You need to tell us, please. Because um, he, will, he will not be flying. 
Well, he's not got long to check in then. Has he? No. He's got 20 minutes. If they fail to arrest the man before his flight departs, he could be gone for good. If he does know that we're looking for him, he might see us and decide he doesn't want to get this flight after all and turn around and go the other way, which just makes our life a little bit harder. Because then we have to look through the airport for him. I'll just go and find out if checking his clothes. Sorry, it's checking clothes. No, it's still open. What time? How long is it left? Any time now. I'm just seeing the bloke with the hood what? looking at us. It's close. Cl it's close. Oh, sorry, sir. Can I just ask you what your name is, please? Gordon. Have you got a passport there? I do. Are you from the states? No, Australia. Australia. I'm not very good with accents. <laughs> it's all right. We're just looking for someone, and he does look a little bit like you, but he's not you. That's fine. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> With the gate closing and no sign of the suspect, Claire and Steve are forced to abandon the search. But maybe he's just had a bit of cold feet or something. Damn it. One of them days. Back in the terminals, the challenge of keeping Heathrow safe never stops. Come forward, please, ladies. The airport security officers search over 200,000 carry-on bags a day. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Ah! Uh, you can't take that on the aeroplane. No, no. Can't take no gun. That's yours. You can... You'll never know what you're going to get until you start a bag search. Some of the things will shock you and amaze you. One of the stranger items I've seen was a, a hollowed out ostrich egg. Um, I've had a wizard's wand. Uh, we see a lot of um, adult type items, which is not a, not a problem, but sometimes they leave the liquids in the bags with them. There was that time when I was uh, searching someone. They had what looked like two plastic vials. As I had a closer examination, there were spiders inside these vials. What looked like what were Tarantulas. It's the freakiest thing I've ever seen. In Terminal 4, former mobile phone salesman Shahid is dealing with the afternoon surge of departing passengers. OK, come over here, sir. Sorry. Is there anything sharp inside the bag? No, nothing, no, 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 nothing like that, no? no? OK, one moment. So leave everything there. I'm just going to check it, OK? Uncle Eki, how was this? Hammer, hammer. Hammer? So you can't take this with you? Not in your hand luggage, you're not allowed? I don't know. I don't know. This hammer you can use, maybe? Oh, no. Because I'm a carpenter. You're so, carpenter, yeah? A carpenter, so that's why I said take good tools to there. Oh, no, no. You see, all these tools, okay. you should be in your big bag. Okay. Um, oh, my God. Was yeah. another one as well. <laughs> no, 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 no. In the hand luggage, you can't take know, this one. I don't know. Oh my God! Okay, look at this. Uh, cordless battery. That you can't take this one. You do either. Okay. You sure, yeah? Uncle? Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's all gonna go. Yeah. The tools will be going in the bin, but it appears the passenger has other, more serious concerns. If he doesn't leave, he would be forced to leave. He's received a deportation order from the UK border agency. He's not allowed to work here. Can they have a number that's name English? Can they have a number that's name? He'd been here illegally for 10 years. Uh, for 10 years, he'd been here illegally working as a carpenter, a builder. Uh, and recently, he'd fallen off the roof where he was working, broke his leg. And at the hospital, that's when they saw that he was actually a legal immigrant. He just needs to go to the um, immigration uh, and get his passport. Okay, can you help him with that? Or put the bag. Put your bag to the not Come here on the pretense that, oh yeah, let's go to England. We'll find we'll find work here. You know, we'll we'll make so much money. But I think when you're here, it's another harsh reality when you're finding somewhere to live and you're here illegally and you're trying to pay your bills. 
Um, but yeah, no, I do feel sorry for him and, you know, wish him the best. Nearly 30,000 people will leave from Terminal 3 departures today, but a handful won't make it further than the gate. Cleaners are coming off, so we're just in time. Heathrow police officers Claire and Steve are on the lookout for a new target, a passenger who has missed his court date. All right, so this time we've got a 23-year-old male who didn't turn up to court when he had his drink drive hearing. So now we wait for him like we did before. He's been up and taking it probably a good five minutes ago. As they stake out the departure gate, Steve notices someone unexpected. Oh, Jay, what familiar? Which one? Hold this. A familiar face among the hundreds of other passengers. Hello, mate. You got your passport, please? Yes. Cheers. Thanks very much. The suspect who had eluded them earlier in the day. You're wanted for serious assault, mate. Serious assault for what? Yeah, mate. You're under arrest, OK? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You do not mention something you lay, rely on at court. Anything you do say will be given in evidence. Where are you going? Australia. Really? For how long? Uh, not, not at all now, am I? Come over here with me a minute. Pick your bag up. Give him your boarding cards. Mate, I know this is very unfortunate. Pleased with it, but if I hadn't have spotted him and known he got on that flight, I would have been annoyed. Yeah. The other suspect was also arrested. He was later charged and found guilty of drink driving offences. I see you back at the Nick. Steve's prisoner was released without charge. It's the start of the October half-term holidays, one of the busiest periods in Heathrow's year. Good morning, Go ahead. Do you need a hand? Um, is it one of you spare? This week, a new manager is taking charge of terminals two and three. 22-year-old Callum. I'll bet for movement there very shortly. Thank you very much. I'll let them know. I joined the team uh, three weeks ago. I've just been through some training. Then I did a shift last week, and today is my second day and it's um it's busy very busy he will be assisted by demi a veteran of the terminal with 20 years of experience there's only one person in our team that's got a nickname callum <laughs> harry potter <laughs> I can see it, I can see it, I can see it. I think it's more to do with the magic that I work on a daily basis as opposed to my appearance, so... Callum, like all terminal managers, will be assessed on how well he can keep the airport running smoothly, whatever's thrown at him. Now, dozens of flights have been cancelled today as thick fog hits Heathrow Airport. 50 flights were cancelled yesterday and Heathrow Airport has been tweeting saying we are continuing to experience reduced operations which is expected to last into tomorrow. During one of the busiest weeks of the year, heavy fog has descended on Heathrow. <laughs> 50 planes were delayed this morning, pushing the already packed afternoon schedule to breaking point. If you have not yet been rebooked onto a flight to Dublin tomorrow, you will not get out from here. Basically, the queue of about 150 passengers, they're not going to get on a flight tonight and more than likely not going to get on a flight tomorrow. The situation is so bad that Callum must continually update Heathrow's most senior managers. Callum, please. We've had an Aer Lingus flight just cancelled, it's full. Um, so they're being landed now and sent to check-in to be re, uh, rebooked. Um, the Air China flight, I believe the inbound flight was diverted to Brussels. So the passengers are all airside. We're just trying to find out whether that's going to go tonight or not. 
Heavy fog has a knock-on effect on every area of Heathrow's operation. We only need to be in fog for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and that's already had a massive effect, massive impact. We can't see anything at the window, so we need to give more space in. So instead of three miles, for example, between two aircraft, we need to give six miles. Then delays start creeping up on outbound aircraft, and that's where the airlines have to start cancelling flights, because it's just not possible for us to be able to get those aircraft away. By 4pm, slow-moving queues of grounded passengers are filling Terminal 2. Tempers are fraying. We have been standing here for hours. Yeah. Like, they treat dogs better than they've treated us. When everything works, it works OK. When anything broke down, everything will broke down also. She said to me, is it that bad? I said, we'll look around the corner and you'll <laughs> see. So she needs to, I hope she doesn't think 100. All they've got here is 100. Do you mind just having a word with us, seeing what, what her plans are? So I need to go and speak to her. With so many frustrated passengers... Copenhagen, who are you looking for, sir? Callum is relying on Demi's experience and charm to manage the crowds. No wants some water. Oh, OK. But even Demi is struggling to maintain order in the terminal. I'm sorry. That's not fair. We're also waiting very long here. Yeah. What was happened? This guy here, right in the front, right. comes from the other queue on our desk. Sorry, gents, but do you know these people have been waiting before you? Yeah, you need to be at the back of this line, guys. We were just queuing here for yeah. the last hour. Yeah. Right, OK. No, that's something you need to take up with your old sir. Sorry. He just skipped the queue and went straight to there. And, I mean, that's not OK, because we want to have service to... If one person kicks off, then you have to do something about it. And people are frustrated enough as it is. For someone then to take their queue space, I think, yeah, it does get challenging, but I'll do exactly the same. I think it's the beast within us. While Callum's team try to keep the peace in the terminal, outside on the airfield, the airside safety team is on heightened alert. We have to make sure that, from air traffic control's perspective, everything on the ground, we can do as much as we can to keep it to keep it smooth running, and that anything that is causing a problem, we can get out there and try and try and resolve it as quick, quickly as possible. With visibility falling to below 50 meters, Chris has been dispatched to patrol the north runway. Phoenix ground. Can you provide a marshal, please? Four one one for Bangladesh. Four one one for a marshal, Roger. The fog is making even basic manoeuvres, like parking at the stand, impossible for pilots. Uh, yeah, he's probably about 10 metres from the stop bar. The stand entry guidance system, which is the box there, it's basically just a, just a guidance system for the aircraft, and it will give it directions on the coming, so it will tell it to turn left onto stand, it will tell it to come forward, if it needs to move left, if it needs to move right, so due to the fog, it doesn't quite recognise the aircraft. So any time that fails, we then take control of the aircraft and marsh it ourselves. With the fog playing havoc with technology, it's down to Chris and the team to manually park every plane. But this takes time. Everything now has just been pushed back, so everything will be going at ever slightly a bit later. And obviously a busy airport like Heathrow, where Every second counts. It, it has it has massive knock-on effects. Air Lingus have just cancelled. The uh, passengers are coming back here. Time to join in the party, mate. It's 9:30 p.m. and in less than two hours, Heathrow's runways will close. All remaining passengers will be stranded for the night. There you go. Just stay around. That's that lovely. Thank you very much. Airlines are no longer providing hotel rooms for delayed passengers, and latecomers are having to fend for themselves. Anyone on that 339? For information, the flight has been postponed. So tomorrow, it's leaving at 9.30. The prior news is we don't have any rooms to give you. A lot of hotel rooms are full. I would say about 140, 150. Yeah, but nobody seems to be leaving. They're all just kind of asking, asking questions. But it's going to probably get quite heated here because he's kind of getting a bit surrounded. If you can find yourselves a room, please find yourselves a room and then try and claim your expenses back. If passengers don't organise their own lodging, Callum faces the prospect of hundreds of people sleeping rough in Terminal 2. 
roll mats here. So yeah, we have got them. So there's 14 pieces, roll mats. This time of night, you're quite vulnerable when you've got public transport stopping in the area, hotel buses stopping in the area, hotels all sold out. That's when you kind of are left with no choice but to give people blankets and a mat. We have free internet downstairs. Go on there, Heathrow Hotels, write down as many numbers as you can and then start ringing around. With 60 minutes to go before closure, Demi steps up his efforts to get every passenger into accommodation for the night. There you go. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, I have a flight here. To Toronto? Yeah. OK. OK. So what have they told you? What you got to do now? I don't like to go to the hotel. You I don't want to go? No, no. I am alone. I am afraid. I can stay here, no problem. Why don't you go to a hotel? No, I don't want to. Why? <laughs> I am afraid. I don't want to. You want to stay at the airport? <laughs> no. Are you sure you don't want to? I don't know. Do you want me to tell you, tell you where to go? Do you want me to show you? <laughs> OK. Come with me. Why? I would be more afraid of here in the airport on my own. Do you know what? Do you know what people would do to get a hotel room now? <laughs> right. So there's your hotel there. Yeah. You're another hotel. Yeah. H4. Yeah. Okay. We'll okay. see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. okay. Take care. You can't have that. If that was my mum, I wouldn't want her sleeping at the airport. So I'd appreciate someone taking her down and. You know, she probably appreciates now when she gets in bed, thinking of lovely because she could be up here. And... No, I'll get a hotel and come back. Get yeah. a hotel. Have a sleep yeah. and a drink. Yeah. 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 OK, <laughs> thanks very much. Cheers. As a difficult day draws to a close, Callum, Demi and the team have managed to persuade most passengers to sleep in hotels. So we've still got passengers in the IDL. Other than that, we're all good. Good stuff, good stuff. All right then, fellas, so we're looking good now. So the terminal's ready for the morning as well, so... We're all right. I think we're in a good place. Copy. Thank you, mate. See you in a uh, This is the first time in this role that I've that I've handled um, any kind of weather disruption. So, um, um, but I think it's gone very well. Out on the perimeter road, Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre, or ARC, processes thousands of creatures arriving from around the world. That's really fine. From cats and dogs. Should we go see your owner? Come on. <laughs> to lizards, frogs, fish, and turtles. Staff are tasked with keeping diseases like rabies at bay. Animal health officer Vicky is responsible for checking in today's new arrivals. Each pet must comply with strict regulations. Ooh, let me move this out of the way. Hello. Max and Molly are uh, from Kenya. It is quite a, a considerable journey for, for these guys. Bit of a change in weather as well. The dog's owner, Hella, is relocating back to the UK to live closer to her mum. I have a new job and I have a new house and I've got to start all over again. So um, I will feel more at home if I have my my pets with me. Max, turning inside. This way. I'm really excited to see my dogs. Yeah. And I was a bit worried about them, so I just feel guilty because, you know, I was worrying about the flight last night. Yes. Yeah. They're my babies. <laughs> yeah. Picking up Molly and Max? Yeah. Yeah, um, there's just a slight problem with the paperwork. If I just take a seat, it's a bit of a discrepancy with the vaccination, so we just need to get confirmation. Um, that what they were given was a rabies vaccine because this is their entry yeah, document. Yeah, yeah, sure. Unless Vicky gets the correct form certifying the dogs are rabies free, they'll face a lengthy quarantine. Three, two. So I'll just give this number a call and um, I'll let you know what they say. Okay. Okay. Yeah, two, two dogs. No, no cat. We need the 
We need the rabies vaccine information. You, you want me to ring you back? It's so frustrating. I mean, what did they turn around so they could be in quarantine for six months? I think I will probably freak yeah. out. For most passengers, air travel in the 21st century is not a luxurious experience. Any laptops, iPads, take them out, please. More liquids and toiletries. But in some discreet corners of the airport, an exclusive set of travellers are preparing to travel in style. Hello, how are you, sir? Hi, James and Virgie. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. More people fly out of Heathrow sitting in first-class seats than any other airport in the world. So, how many boxes of champagne? Oh, yeah, 20. Ticket, ticket. Well, we haven't checked, we haven't counted 20. It's 10 a.m. and premium lounge manager Neelam is overseeing today's delivery of champagne. Even at this time in the morning, uh, champagne is still very popular. <laughs> we can go through between six to eight bottles of champagne first thing in the morning. Because they've paid so much money, their holiday starts as soon as they arrive at the airport. I mean, that's how I feel when I travel. I'm in holiday mode, so I don't think about the time. You know, I want to have a glass of champagne with my breakfast and enjoy. It's impossible to go economy. I mean, my accountants uh, always have a go at me about it. But uh, look, uh, I'd spend two hundred and fifty thousand probably a year, maybe three hundred on travel. On travel, it doesn't include hotels. Yes, we're ready now for you, Mr. Sage. Thank you very much. With first-class returns to Dubai costing fourteen times the price of economy tickets. Neelam can't afford for anything to be out of place. Take that out. It's a bit messy. Um, I think we just need to tell the chefs that the sausages need to be cooked a little bit more. OK. They're a bit pale, and that sometimes put passengers off if they're too pale. I expect the standards to be 100%. I'm terrible when I go out. I expect the highest level of service. <laughs> I do. I don't complain about anything. The lounge spends lavishly to win the loyalty of premium passengers. £350,000 a year on champagne and £20,000 on flowers. Look in here, these are really beautiful. So we're going to put these in. <laughs> How much are they per stem? Well, you pay up to between £15 and £20 per stem for these. I think that one's got more of those twigs in. That one has more of the twigs in than this one. The afternoon rush is starting, but not everyone's making it further than reception. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much. Oh, my lovely Mr. Nishan. Yes. I do apologize. You're a silver member. Mm -hmm. Only gold here in this lounge. Sorry, my lovely. Mm. I do apologize. Have a lovely day. Thank you. We get that all the time. Uh, we get quite a lot of abuse if we say no. Are you a gold or platinum yeah, member? No, so this lounge is for business and first class, right. gold and platinum members. Right. In this or case, they protest and sit in front of the lounge and won't go. You have access to the British Elvis lounge. Come, come in there. Unfortunately, not. Right. Okay. Seems a bit daft. Okay, thank you. People work very hard for their money and they want the best. And if they think spending a certain amount of money to travel in first class is what they want to do, then why shouldn't they? We don't want to travel like this. Of course, but we can't. One mile away from the luxury of Terminal 3 lie Heathrow's 22 cargo warehouses. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Morning, Grumpy. <laughs> cargo handler Mick the Hat 
has 30 tons of freight to pack up, ready for the afternoon's flight to Chicago. I've been doing it since I was 17. Work that out. <laughs> I started here when I was 17. I'm now 64. Four large crates of salmon are packed and ready to go. 50,000 tonnes are shipped every year, making it Heathrow's biggest export by far. What kind of things uh, have you shipped here? All sorts. Vegetables, flowers, <laughs> bodies, body parts, loads of wood, anything. It goes through that door. I'll tell you, you'd be um, surprised what goes through here. If you'd have come yesterday, you'd have seen the rabbits. Today, one item requires Mick's extra special attention. Right, where's the sandwich pallet? The car's here. Do you want to get it down on the bay three? Yeah, Now we're going to move off to door three. Come on, this way. Oh, here we go. I ain't seen one of them for a long time. The rare 1938 British racing car was bought last week at auction for half a million pounds by an anonymous American buyer. Do we know if there's any fuel in it? Is it? OK. It's a nice car. I'd like to own it. <laughs> but it's a few bobbles, I know that. Do you know who's buying it? Someone with lots of money. <laughs> A millionaire out there. This is good to go. We can send it away then. Yep. Would you want to go over the spring? Cargo is big business for airlines. Damaged freight and a damaged reputation could be costly. Right, now we're going to have to strap it down wheel by wheel to the pallet so it's safe to go out onto the aircraft. Fortunately, today, they've got an expert handler on the case. Just secured it a little bit better. We'll do the same with the back. This is one of the busiest sheds on the airport. We're always cramming freight in and cramming freight out. But that's what it's all about, getting it on the plane. Don't go on the plane, you don't get paid. In the animal reception centre, Hella has been waiting for an hour to find out if her dogs will be released or sent to quarantine. Finally, the vet in Kenya sends over more paperwork. my family back and I can kind of get on with, with getting into my life here in England. Next time, an aircraft gets the world's most expensive nose job. Oh, I slept my ass when I was at six <laughs> weeks old, man. Check-in staff face their toughest test of the year. If one of us falls, it causes chaos for everyone here. And an inaugural flight struggles to get off the ground. The response team's gone to the wrong aircraft. And there's more behind the scenes at Heathrow in Britain's busiest airport next Monday night at nine. 
Watch the act who won hearts and votes Saturday night. The Britain's Got Talent final is on the ITV hub. And sparks fly at Ampika's glamorous shampoo launch in the Real Housewives of Cheshire next over on ITVB.